Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Happy Monday. Let's now have Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque. Maganda umaga, Pilipinas. Maganda umaga po sa mga miyembro ng Malacanang Press Corps. Meron po tayong dalawang resource persons ngayong araw na ito. Sila po ay uh, magdi-discuss tungkol sa Tax Reform for Acceleration or and Inclusion, Train Law. At ang ating mga panuhin po ay ang Assistant Secretary um, ng at spokesperson ng Department of Finance, si Attorney Paula Alvarez. At saka ang Assistant Secretary rin po ng Domestic Finance Group, si Assistant Secretary Teresa Habitan. So please, let's welcome um, Attorneys Paula Alvarez and Assistant Secretary Teresa Habitan. Thank you. Floor is yours. Okay. So good morning everyone. Today we'll um, give you a short presentation and explanation on train and its impact to inflation. So I'll try to do it in English and Filipino para it's easier for everyone to understand and para it's um, easier to digest. So initially, as a recap, Please. Okay. As a recap, so what did we do in tax reform? So the package one, um, so ngayon, ang naririnig po natin karaniwan yung mga excise um, taxes. Pero ang hindi natin nababanggit is what did we do to also contribute funds to the general public? So first, we uh, simplified and we lowered the personal income tax. So we also restructured the tax for self-employed professionals at the flat tax of 8%. So we also reduced and uh, restructured the donors tax to a single tax rate of 6% and um, ex state tax also for those exceeding uh, standard deduction of 5 million, we also in increased it to 10 million. So what else did we do? We broadened the VAT system by removing the num re reducing the number of exemptions. We staggered the increase of excise taxes on petroleum products. We simplified the excise tax on automobiles, introduced a sugar sweetened beverage tax, and introduced other taxes as well. So second slide. So what has been the govern what has the government been doing? So first, we as you can see the year on year, so yung quarter 1 of 2017 and quarter 1 of 2018 if you um, compare them, the tax collection of both BIR, BOC and the other offices actually increased and our non-tax revenues as well also increased. On our expenditure effort it means that um, we have been um, investing more on infrastructure and uh, we have been um, uh, adding more to our um, economic growth. So uh, even our expenditure effort is also growing. So next slide. So what has been the initial effect of this tax reform effort? So according to SNP credit ratings, we were um, increased from stable to BBB+. Plus. So this is positive for our economy because it signals abroad and the international market that we are a very investable country. So next. Um, okay, so historically, okay, so a lot of people have been talking about inflation. So if you would look at it um, historically, inflation is very moderate. It's, um, it's normal for inflation to be increasing year on year because every year historically it really increased. But what we want to look at is if it is increasing on a moderate pace or if it's spiking up very, very quickly. Um, if you would look at the graph, uh, as of the moment, our inflation rate are um, increasing moderately. And this is normal for a growing economy. But if you look at the month-to-month -month progression of the impact of train on inflation, it is actually decreasing. So it means that the effect of the train on inflation is actually softening. So next slide. Okay, so what are the 10 um, drivers of inflation? So, okay, so in a commodity uh, group, uh, we chose the top 10 of the uh, most um, commodities that are contributing to inflation. And these are fish, uh, these are those that we are flashing on the screen. Now, what does this mean? How do we relate this to what's actually happening? So um, what we are trying to say is that when you look at inflation, it's not all about drain. So um, what we have is that drain only gave an impact of 0.4 percentage points to the overall inflation rate. And um, it is not only drain that is um, contributing to inflation because number one, we have to consider global um, prices of oil. Okay, so um, although it is a Increasing, uh, we have heard from the OPEC countries and Russia that they are in talks of increasing um, oil production. So we are looking forward to the effects that this will give to our um, 
supply of oil. Number two, um, what we also have to consider is the decreasing um, value of peso. So, okay, so with the decreasing peso, it's not entirely bad. Number one, it's decreasing because interest rates in the United States are increasing. So it's normal that the people would pull out their money and bring it to the United States. Number two, um, we have been contributing to um, giving more money in people's pockets. So how do we explain this? For example, when we lowered the personal income tax, we actually gave money to the people for them to spend. When we um, gave unconditional cash transfers, we also increased the um, spending power of the people. As well as when we, uh, when now we are going to give free education, that will also contribute to inflation. Because once you give more money in the market, right now people, instead of saving, they actually spend. And you can see this because the um, the amount of income of Jollibee, of McDonald's, actually increased. So you would see that people are actually spending, and this is also contributing to inflation. So, um, next slide, please. Okay, so for oil excise, as you can see, um, although the gas and diesel prices actually increased, only the top percent or the one highlighted in pink is because of drain. All the other factors or the bigger factors beneath, that is actually because of international prices. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. Okay, so um, when we calculated for the impact of drain to inflation, what we did was to have a a uh, standard of 50 to 60 pesos US as uh, 50 to 60 US dollars per barrel but as you can see the Dubai crude oil actually increased in a fast pace so it wasn't accounted for but now we have um, we actually inserted buffer provisions in the train law wherein once the do, um, average oil international price um, reaches around 80 US dollars then we can actually suspend the implementation of the next tranche of increase in the excise prices of oil in the succeeding years. So this also, as we were mentioning earlier, it, uh, because of the devaluation of the peso, which is also because of uh, larger imports of capital equipment, of heavy machinery, because right now we're doing build, build, build also. So a lot of manufacturers and businesses, they're importing capital goods. So because they are importing, the demand for dollar actually increases. That's why the peso is also um, um, going down. But this is not entirely bad because if you look at it on the other side, the remittances of OFWs actually are increasing because of the higher um, exchange rate of the dollar. So the ones entering the, the market, the money flowing inside the country is actually also increasing. So next slide, please. So this, is, this also contributes to the rapid increase in uh, retail of gas prices. But as we earlier mentioned, um, we are looking forward to the discussions of the OPEC countries and Russia in um, uh, increasing output of oil. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so another concern is that inflation is now one of the top concerns of Filipinos. Although this is true, it is not only now that we are concerned about inflation. If you will look at it historically, even in 2010, ever since, inflation, regardless of whether it's going up or if it's going down, has always been on the top three concerns of every Filipino. So next. So what we want to show is that while inflation is moderately increasing, the SWS survey on self-rated poverty and hunger actually decreased. So it means that people feel that they have more money. So um, it actually our um, national yung hunger, how people see themselves if they are poor or not, it actually decreased. So this is actually good because although a lot of people are saying that um, the, the poverty rate would be increasing because of inflation, it's actually not true because self-rated poverty, if the people itself, they themselves already rate themselves as it's actually decreasing. So um, what else do we have to consider? So another thing that we have to consider is that aside from the implementation of the train, we also have new laws, for example, yung ating tarification bill, which is already in the process of, um, in the legislative mill. Once this is passed, we assume that it, we, uh, we think that it will lower the impact of inflation because it will um, 
increase rice um, rice importation in the Philippines, and it is it will only be subject to tariffs. Number two, we think that the passage of the national ID system will help us efficiently administer the unconditional cash transfers because it would be easier now to determine which of the people are the beneficiaries because one of the problems in implementing the, uh, the conditional and unconditional cash transfers is that not all Filipinos have proper identification. So, syempre, lalong-lalo na po yung nasa rural areas like na nasa probinsya, hindi naman po lahat sila may ID. And it's very hard to determine sino ba talaga yung dapat covered ng conditional and unconditional cash transfer. So ngayon, na we already have yung national ID, mas madali pong maibigay yung transfer sa mga tamang tao. So, so that's our presentation and if you have any questions or clarifications, we can answer you. MPC questions? Rose Novenario? Microphone, please. Hi, good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, sa haba po ng paliwanag ninyo, no, ang gusto lang pong malaman ng pangkaraniwang mamamayan, paano po maiibsan yung kanilang paghihirap sa sunod-sunod na pagtaas ng presyo ng lahat ng produkto? Sa langis po, ah, kulang ko lang na pong 20 times na tumaas ang presyo ng langis mula po nung ipinatupad ang train. Ano po yung maitutulong? 15 or 16 times na po. So that's less than 20. Ano po yung maitutulong natin para maibsan po yung pahirap considering na walang wage hike, meron po mga petition para sa fair hike. Ano po yung gagawin ng gobyerno rito ay sumusugat na po ito sa kabuhayan ng mga mamamayan. Increase? Increase of oil prices? Yes, yes, yes. Meron tayong, meron tayong slide kanina na pinakita tungkol dun sa presyo ng Sa, ito, ito, no? I think uh, siguro i-highlight natin dito. Sabi nga kanina ni Asik Paula, uh, karaniwang sinisisi sa train yung buong uh, bilis ng taas ng presyo sa, sa market, yung increase in inflation. Uh, siguro kailangan lang natin linawin na ang, ang pinagbubuhatan ng pag-increase ng price ng petrolyo, for example, no? hindi naman po lahat galing sa train. Kasi kung titignan nyo, yung taas ng diesel prices, for example, na around uh, 10, point, 10 pesos and 20 centavos. Ang dahil lang po sa train dyan na diretso ay yung 2 pesos and 80 centavos. Dahil yung 250 na tinaas ng, na pinataw na excise tax at yung kaakibat na, na VAT. So ano yung pinagagalingan ng ibang uh, uh, increase na to, yung, yung, yung balance na 7 pesos and 40 centavos. Yan yung sinasabi namin na nanggagaling mo uh, from the higher prices of petroleum products coming from abroad. Kasi ano tayo eh, we are uh, huge importers of oil. Uh, most of our um, our demand for oil, imported po lahat yan. So talagang kinakarga natin yung, yung presyo ng galing sa abroad dito sa ating mga domestic prices. Tapos uh, na kasama pa yung uh, depreciation nga po ng peso dahil din po sa increase ng ng federal uh, ng fed rates sa sa US no so nagkaroon po ng uh, shift ang investor sentiment from emerging economies uh, like the Philippines marami pong investable funds na umu na pumupunta ngayon sa US tapos uh, dahil nga uh, medyo yung ating investment outlook mas maganda yung ating pong mga kapitalista dito yung businessmen let's call them businessmen, meron po tayong nakikitang surge ng importation ng capital equipment. So, yun yung nagiging dahilan ng ating uh, pagtaas ng, uh, sa, sa depreciation ng peso. Yung pong tungkol naman sa kung paano natin matutulungan, ang meron na pong 4.2 million families na nabigyan ng DSWD ng unconditional cash transfer. Ito yung isang uh, ipinangako natin uh, under the provisions of the train. At ang anticipation po natin by September, uh, sana po lahat po na ng tao na gusto nating bigyan, and this is around 10 million families all in all, mabibigyan po natin ng tulong na uh, unconditional cash transfer. At ang atin naman pong DOE at ang DTI, katulong din natin dito para bantayan naman no, kung medyo nagiging mas exuberant yung taas ng presyo na tinatawag natin unwarranted. 
para okay. ano? Um, to answer you, no, yung sa tanong mo, uh, unang-una sa lahat, yung ating uh, DOE is already implementing a stricter control dun sa ating presyo ng langis. Kasi nga, meron pa ring mga reports na yung profiteering. Uh, isang halimbawa dyan, kunyari yung nangyari sa yellow cab. Sinabi nung kanilang mga empleyado na kaya daw nag-increase ang presyo nila dahil daw sa train. Pero pagkatapos nun, nag-issue sila ng public apology na hindi naman pala tong, dahil sa train, kaya nag-increase yung presyo nila. Pero dahil sa global prices of cheese, at saka yung sa renta nila. Pangalawa, um, yung ating DOE rin nakikipagtulungan sa mga um, um, petroleum companies para magkaroon tayo ng discount para sa ating mga public utility vehicles. So, ang gusto nating tulungan ay eh, syempre yung mga public utility vehicles. Kasi kaya rin naman natin in-increase yung presyo din ng langis kasi nung nakaraan, ang nasa subsidize natin is yung mga mas mayayaman o yung may private vehicles. Dahil sila ang mas may maraming kinukonsumong langis, so ang nangyayari dahil mababa yung presyo, parang si na-subsidize mo yung mga private vehicles. So, pangatlo, uh, ngayon, at uh, sinusubukan natin na yung ating implementation or yung ating uh, yung sa restrictions on um, yung oil smuggling, inaayos din natin. So, ngayon nakikipag-ugnayan din tayo sa BOC at saka sa DOE, paano natin malilimit yung mga pumapasok na langis. So, meron tayong mga hakbang na ginagawa rin sa BSP para yung ating, kumbaga yung sinasabing um, interest rates Uh, magkakaroon tayo ng fiscal policies para malimit natin ito. So, pangat, pangapat, ang isang nagiging dahilan kaya mahal ang mga produkto dahil kulang na kulang tayo sa logistics. Yung ating mga daan at saka yung minsan transportation para ilipat mo ang isang good sa isang lugar papunta sa isa ay mahal kasi kulang nga tayo sa infrastructure. Kaya ngayon, binibilisan na natin ang pag-co-construct uh, nga kaya tayo nag, uh, mamadali sa ating build, build, build para naman mas mapadali natin ang pagta-transfer ng goods from one place to another. Ma'am, yung ang question ko po ay eh, yung kagyat na solusyon po, yung 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 kagyat, yung napapa yung ngayon mismo na solusyon kasi yung epekto po nito ay pang-araw-araw po sa kabuhayan ng mamamayan. Yung mga binanggit po ninyo, makakatulong po ito sigurado po 'yan. Pero baka po medyo magtagal pa bago marana maramdaman ng mga mamamayan. Yung kagyat pong solusyon yung kailangan po ng mamamayan. Considering po may babala din po si Senator Ping Lacson na ito pong nangyayaring ito ay eh, baka raw po mag-snowball into a people power revolution dahil po kumakalam na ang sikmura ng mamamayan. Opo. Yung dyan naman po, unang-una nga po sinasabi natin na yung survey nga po, ang self-rated poverty at ang hunger bumababa po. Ibig sabihin, bumababa naman po yung number ng mahihirap. Pangalawa po, yung ating unconditional at saka yung conditional cash transfers, in-increase na po natin. Tapos magbibigay rin po tayo ng libreng edukasyon. Ang kailangan po kasi natin maintindihan is para po mag maumangat sa kahirapan ang ating mga mamamayan, kailangan bibigyan mo sila ng edukasyon, kailangan po nila ng trabaho. So, paano po natin gagawin yun kung hindi po tayo magsisimulang magreforma? So, nandyan naman po yung mga subsidies na ating binibigay. Lalong-lalo na po yung sa healthcare, dinadagdagan po natin yan. So, yung kumbaga, imbis na pambibili mo ng gamot, nababawasan na yung babayaran mo doon. Kasi nga, nag increase na tayo ng pondo para dyan. So, ang kailangan naman po natin talagang tignan, eh, hindi naman po lahat ng reforma, eh, madali-dali natin makukuha. So, kailangan din po nating balance. Eh, nagbibigay naman po tayo ng tulong, lalong-lalo na po yung unconditional cash transfers doon po sa pinakamahihirap na household. So sa tingin po natin, ito naman po ay nakakatulong at sapat na po. Oo. Sagutin ko lang din, no? Well, uh, tatlo yung uh, naanunsyo over the weekend, no? Yung uh, pagpapabilis ng proseso na pag-angkat ng diesel man lang na kalahati ang presyo galing pala sa Russia, no? So meron na pong uh, standing order at itong linggong ito expect na kakalampagin talaga ang uh, DOE at saka ang DFA na papabilis yung uh, posibilidad na mag-angkat ng uh, mas murang diesel at least sa Russia. No? Uh, pangalawa, yung order nga po sa DTI na habulin yung mga lumalabag sa suggested retail price. No? At um, bukod pa po dyan, well, nakatulong naman po ang gobyerno ng ating presidente dahil ngayong Hunyo po, lahat ng mga estudyante sa state universities and colleges at least libre na po ang tuition at matrikula. No? So, Uh, hindi na po problemahin yun. No? Alam namin po, humirap ang buhay. Alam natin, 
na pagtaas ng mga presyo ng mga bilihin ay dahil sa pagtaas ng presyo ng krudo sa pandaigdigang merkado. Kaya nga po, patungo tayo sa akbang na humahanap tayo ng mga alternatibong mga supplier. At uh, ang, ang projection naman po, no, dahil nga ang mga bansang Russia ay hindi miyembro ng OPEC at nag increase sila ng production, eh may posibilidad na mapababa ang presyo. Pero sa ngayon po, ang prioridad talaga, subukan nating mag-angkap ng uh, diesel man lang uh, na galing po sa Russia. No? So, panimula pa lang po yan. At uh, inaasahan natin sa cabinet meeting ng uh, Uh, darating na a uh, uh, lahat po ng departamento ay uh, magsasubmit din ng kanilang mga reports para sa alleviation measures. No? Dahil ito naman po talaga hindi inaasahan na biglang nagkagulo ng county sa Middle East at naging dahilan kung bakit tumaas din ang, mga, ang presyo ng uh, krudo sa pandaigdigang merkado. Ay, last na lang po. Sir, ano po yung, yung paninindigan ng palasyo dun sa uh, uh, tawag dito, gumugulong po na panawagan din ng mga senador na suspindihin pansamantala yung implementasyon ng train rate. Alam niyo po, tagapagpatupad lang ng batas ang presidente. Ang kongreso po, may ganyang kapangyarihan. So, ang gagawin po ng presidente, kung ano nakasaad sa batas, tatlong buwan na 80 ang Dubai, eh po pwedeng masuspende yung mas mataas na excise tax, no? Oo, at meron pang excise, yung posibilidad na masususpenden yung uh, VAT, no? May provision din ata na titignan, well anyway, may provision ako nakita, di ba? Na meron din posibilidad na yung VAT na, na kasi iba pa yung size tax sa VAT. Pero yun po ang kasagutan. Naku, kailangan po ng batas. Kapag ang presidente po ay nagsuspinde, yan naman po ay paglabag sa salig ang batas. Dahil kami po, eh, kinakailangan bigyan ng implementasyon ng mga batas. Hindi po kami po pwedeng gumawa ng batas. So, pabor po kayo dun sa sakaling manalo yung suspension ng ano sa... Nasa kongreso po yan. Kung talagang magkakaroon po ng batas, susunod po tayo na, na hindi natin uh, kukolektahin yan. Pero, ang pakiusap lang po, hindi naman po permanente itong nangyayaring uh, krisis. Talaga naman pong krisis. Nakakaabala ang pagtaas ng presyo, no? Dahil uh, mahigit 200% ang itinaas ng presyo at hindi natin yan talaga inaasahan dahil medyo stable naman yung presyo ng, uh, ng crudo, no? Pero um, temporary po ito, tignan natin kung ano mga pangyayari. Gaya ng sinabi ko, yung Russia ngayon nag-increase ng supply nila. Pati Estados Unidos po ngayon, biglang nag-increase ng exports nila ng crudo. Dati-rati po, hindi naman exporting country ng uh, crudo ang uh, Estados Unidos. Ngayon, ang pinakamalaking buyer niya ng crudo eh, ay ang uh, China. So, isa rin po yan sa pag-aaralan. No? Kung ang China umaangkat sa Amerika, bakit hindi rin tayo umangkat? Halos pareho naman ang distansya dyan, no? kasing layo rin yan sa Middle East. No? So lahat po yan, eh, tinitignan ngayon ng gobyerno dahil hindi katanggap-tanggap na habang tumataas ang presyo ng krudo, eh, wala tayo hakbang na ginagawa. Ang assurance lang po ni Presidente, hindi po tayo nakaupo lamang. Tinitignan po natin lahat ng options at uh, kung po pwedeng uh, uh, makahanap ng paraan, eh, hahanapin po natin yan. Okay, Salarina so, Monte to be followed by Dreo. Microphone. Good morning. Uh, reg regarding the um, some lawmakers are apparently hesitant to pass the another package of this um, com CTRP. Um, how confident are you that your target will be met? And if not, uh, how would it affect the cash flow of the government? Okay. Um, for package two, uh, what we are actually looking at is rationalizing fiscal incentives. So what we want to do, number one, is to decrease the corporate income tax of small and medium enterprises. Kasi uh, if you look at it, mas malaki yung uh, population kumbaga, ng small and medium enterprises and it's unfair that they are uh, paying a higher, a higher income tax as compared to bigger companies with incentives. So number two, What do we want to do with the fiscal incentives? Hindi naman po totoo, natatanggalin natin silang lahat. What we want to do is to rationalize them to make them um, time time bound, efficient, transparent, and target based. So ano ibig natin sabihin dito? Gusto natin na once uh, nakuha mo na yung iyong pinuhunan, kumbaga hindi forever ang iyong incentives, dapat nagko-contribute ka na sa gobyerno. Pangalawa, transparent kasi gusto natin lahat ng fiscal incentives nakikita natin. Meron tayong isang body na nagtitingin kung ano-ano ba yung mga binibigay ng gobyerno. Pangatlo, targeted because what we want is those um, uh, companies that are actually um, giving back 
to the people like for example yung nagbibigay ng training sa kanilang mga empleyado nagi increase ng kanilang productivity or nagbibigay ng bagong technology innovations these are the types of corporations that we want to give incentives so as long as you are doing these things that you, um, you are giving targeted um, they are transparent they are time bound and then they are efficient then hindi tayo dapat mag, mag mag worry natatanggalan tayo ng incentives kasi pwede ka naman mag-apply uli ng incentives as long as meron kang dinadagdag na bagong innovation nagdadagdag ka ng tulong sa mga tao kumbaga it's a growing process so kailangan laging may innovation para yung progress mo habang nagbibigay ka ng incentives dire-diretso pa rin so right now we are with we are having healthy discussions with our legislators and tinitingnan naman po nilang maigi kung ano magiging impact nito at paano yun makakatulong sa kanit kanilang mga distrito. Are you still optimistic that this will be passed within the year? Because I believe that's the target of the government. Yes, uh, we're still op optimistic since um, we're still uh, in the, we're already in the committee level and we're ha having healthy discussions uh, regarding the bill. Okay. Uh, another um, question. Are you still also optimistic I think by 2022, you're targeting to lower poverty rate by 14%. With what is happening right now, are you still confident that this uh, target on reducing poverty would still be met? Yes, ma'am. Um, because as we already stated, the surveys actually show that the self-rated poverty and hunger is going down. And also, we are increasing education funds, hospital funds. So we think that the basis for you to reduce poverty is, number one, to increase education. This is um, primordial because we want uh, one of the things that investors are looking at the country is the people or its workforce. So right now, we have our demographics, we have a higher percentage of young people and we have a good supply of young people and what we need to do is to educate them well para yung iyong mga papasok na jobs ay high paying jobs or on a higher bracket. So these are the steps that we want to take kaya tayo nagpupush ng train para mapondohan natin tong mga ito para in the long run, yung ating target of reducing poverty would be achieved. Okay, thank you, Dreo, to be followed by Pia Gutierrez and Ina Andolong. Hi, ma'am. I... Yes. Okay. Last few questions on the UF. Last few questions on the UF. So, ano na lang, ilimit na lang yung follow-up question, okay? To the DF, ma'am, um, balikan ko lang yung isang point kanina. So, what's your stand on the calls from the lawmakers to roll back the excise tax, mm. uh, fuel excise taxes. Okay. So number one, um, hindi po kasi natin pwedeng gawin na it's just an executive order kasi po pag uh, nasa sa batas, kailangan po para ma-amend natin, magpas tayo ulit ng batas. Pangalawa po, uh, yun nga po, meron tayong in-insert na mitigating measure na pag umabot na po ang crude oil sa 80 US dollars, i -i, uh, sususpend na po natin sa succeeding year. Ang crucial po kasi dito is we cannot just suspend it kasi po yung ating mga funding, lalong-lalo na po yung sa free state universities, lahat po yan yung ating mga gustong pondohan, yung mga increase sa salary ng ating personnel, ng ating mga guro, lahat po yun, yung plans natin to fund all those, mahihirapan na po tayong pondohan yun kung ating isususpend yung ating mga provisions nga po na ating binanggit. So you don't support this po? Yes, okay. yes. Tapos ma'am, how, just to give us some figures, how much do we stand to lose if this succeeds? Um, we'll, we'll give you the figures because we're it. Okay, uh, Ina. I, I'm sorry, Pia. Ma'am, uh, clarify ko lang po yung uh, buffer na nalagay sa train. Um, you said that when the oil prices uh, reach $80 per barrel for a uh, period of three months, what we will suspend is further rate, tax rate increases. For 2019. For 2019. Yes. So, hindi po yung parang pinaniniwalaan ng taong bayan na yung excise automatic. tax mismo, automatic. Uh, you cannot do that because um, you, the provision of the law is very specific also that um, when when the Dubai crude oil hits 80 US dollars per barrel at an average, it will be the next tranche in 2019 that we will suspend and it's also hard for us to suspend mid-year because you have already projected in your appropriations in your revenues and in your budget those things that you will fund in your um, budget allocations are also set in place do you see that being much of a relief sa taong bayan lalo na ngayon po talaga na uh, raramdaman yung epekto ng pagdaas ng uh, presyo ng uh, gasolina um, 
Um, yun nga po. So, we are trying to implement yung unconditional cash transfers. Um, kasi po, yung naging kanilang binatikos nga po, hindi po lahat ng beneficiaries nakakakuha. So, since naipasa na po nila yung national ID, then it will be easier for us to implement that. So, yung ating mga buffers, like yung conditional cash transfers, unconditional cash transfers, at saka yung ating mga subsidies, talaga pong uh, ngayon po, niro-roll out na rin po natin. DSWD also can give you figures on that. Last na lang po. Considering the situation right mm -hmm. now, how likely does the government see um, yung suspension ng further um, uh, tax rate increases on uh, excise oil? For the oil, um, we're really looking forward with the meeting of the OPEC countries with Russia because that would be a really big help for us if they increase oil production. Kasi one of the reasons why it's actually in the price of oil is increasing because there's a shortage of supply. So if they plan to increase the output, then it would have a better impact kasi it will lower the 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 inflation rate kasi the the, the dami nga yung iyong um, supply of oil eh di ba baba yung presyo mo sa market so in the long run we think na hindi na hindi yan aabot sa 80 sana kasi nga magpo-produce sila ng more more um, output of oil okay mpc i'm sorry may prior mm -hmm. uh, appointments uh, yes. ang ating mga guests so can, uh, uh, rosalie cos uh, limit your questions sa yung follow up question and joanna mo na Hi, Ma'am. Kay Asik Alvarez po. Nabanggit niyo po kanina na isa sa mga uh, contributory dun sa inflation, yun pong pagdadagdag ng purchasing powers sa mga uh, mamamayan. Ano po ang stand ng DOF pagdating sa proposal na i-increase yung national minimum wage ng 750? Um, hindi na po kasi yan scope ng uh, opo, DOF. Um, sa anyway, may batas po dyan. Regional wage boards po magdedetermine. Opo. Hindi na po tayo po pwede bumalik sa national minimum wage nang wala pong bagong batas galing sa kongreso. So okay. ngayon po talaga regional wage boards pero tinawagan na nga po no um, nag-issue na ng mandato ang presidente sa lahat ng uh, regional wage boards na magpulong na at pag-aralan kung kinakailangan kang itaas ang mga regional minimum wage. Okay, jo um, Joanna. Yes, uh, ma'am, uh, tanong ko lang po, uh, I don't know if uh, scope rin ito na DOF, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, since tumataas po yung, uh, yung presyo ng langis no, sa world market, and uh, ever since uh, maraming kritiko po ang nagre-raise nung, uh, nung oil deregulation law as the culprit, would the DOF uh, recommend the review or like a revisit mm -hmm. man, at least revisit on, on the law? Opo. Um, yung dyan po kasi, sa, yung law, lawmakers po talaga ang ano dyan, pag nagbibigay po sila ng mga ganyang criticisms, ang nangyayari po sa uh, regular course of business ng ating dalawang houses of Congress, binibig, hinihingan lang po nila kami ng posisyon. Kung baga, hihingi lang po yan ng posisyon sa executive branch, pero at the end of the day, sila pa rin po talaga ang nagdedetermine kung anong gagawin nila po sa batas. Pero, uh, may study na po ba kayo or anything? Mm, right now, we have no position as, as of the moment. We haven't been asked yet. Okay, we can uh, we can only accommodate uh, last three questions. Yes, sir. Joseph Morong and RJ. Ma'am, halimbawa yung uh, crude oil price pumalo more than 80 and we cannot do anything about the excise taxes, no? Paano yung scenario natin dun? So, this one Hindi po siya. Once it reaches 80, Yun na po, yung the DBCC would already convene to uh, to um, suspend. So, 80 po talaga yung cut-off. Hindi natin siya pwedeng panagpasin ng 80 ah, okay. US so, dollars. Pag tayo ng 80, yes. suspend the what? Yung the implementation next, of... Draft. Yes, yes. Yung for 2019. Ano? 2019. January 2019. Okay, RJ? Microphone, please. Uh, on package two, muna, ma ma'am. In your consultations uh, with the stakeholders, uh, what are the concerns of private stakeholders, business businessmen, so far with the tax reform package two? Well, for the small and medium enterprises, for example, in chambers of commerce, they're really positive. Kasi karamihan po niyan, small and medium size, yung mga, sila po talaga yung magbe-benefit. But for the incentives, I think you should... Um... Uh, for those the locators sa zones, they may, medyo merong silang agam-agam, no? Kasi parang ang unang intindi nila, tatanggalin lahat ng incentives. But mm -hmm. as ASIC Paula has explained, hindi naman ganun ng trust ng government. Mm -hmm. We will still retain the incentives, kaya nga lang iibahin natin kung paano siya, how it's being uh, administered. So kailangan performance-based, time-bound. 
transparent at saka uh, targeted no so may, may kumaga may kinahihinat na yung ating incentives Okay, second one. We see excess revenues from train, right? And do we have new flagship projects that are set to start this year? For the build, 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 I think it's ongoing. We have the 75 flagship projects. And then the yung ating revenues, yun yung gagamitin natin para pondohan yung startup ng ating mga flagship projects. Okay, thank you. Okay, last two questions, Christine and Ace. Ace. Alvarez. Clarify lang. Si Senator Recto, he, he's arguing that the provision uh, dun sa trail law is self-executory and it should be implemented agad yung suspension. So can, did, did I get it right? You're saying that uh, we have to pass a law first before you suspend? Um, yung kasi and he cited yes, Section yes, yes. 5 actually. Opo. Yung I think uh, they, ang nalilito po yata sila kasi meron po tayong provision doon na ang sinasabi niyang baka self-executing is yung 80 US dollars na average price. Pero kung isususpend po nila yung buong train law altogether, hindi mo pwedeng gawin yon Kasi kailangan po natin ng batas para i-amend ang isa pang batas. Hindi po pwede yung executive um, out of whim, sasabihin lang niya na ayoko nang i-implement yung train. Hindi po po pwede yun, kasi batas po yun. Para po magawa natin yun, kailangan natin ng bagong batas. Pero yung sinasabi po niya na self-executing, yun po sa average price na sinasabi po natin, na pag umabot na po na 80 US dollars per barrel, tsaka po tayo magkakaroon ng DBCC na magbibigay ng recommendation to suspend. Okay. Ace Romero, the excise. On 2019. Na po. Uh, question lang po. So you mentioned uh, kung masususpend man mm -hmm. January 2019 pa and then you mentioned yung, yung sa excise tax provisions. Okay. Uh, but in this case, si binanggit nyo rin yung relief, yung mga cash transfers for the poorest sectors. But how about yung mga mahirap din and maybe yung middle class was also feeling the pinch? Opo. They will have to green and bear it na lang. Opo. Yung sa middle class po na sinasabi natin, yung middle class na po yan, sila po yung nag-benefit sa ating lower income tax. So ang sinasabi po natin, kasi po ang naging, ang naging automatic response ng majority po is imbis na i-save mo, nagsispend po sila. So gastos po ng gastos kasi nga marami ka ng disposable income. So makikita po natin to kasi for example, food, yung mga Jollibee, McDonald's, tumaas yung revenue nila if you look at their reports sa uh, yung ating PSE sa stock But exchange. But it will be offset by higher prices also. Actually, we gave more. Um, actually, okay. Um, for example, the government is releasing 33 billion monthly as disposable income for the people. This is composed of 2.5 billion per month for unconditional cash transfer, 12 billion for personal income tax reduction, 15 billion per month in uh, wages as 30% of government infrastructure, and 50 billion is labor cost. 3.5 billion for per month for free state um, universities and colleges tuition. So, dinagdagan po natin. Pero, kung titignan nyo yung tax po na ating binigay, kumbaga yung kinuha nating tax, ang equivalent lang po to 36.3 billion. So, kung isusubtract nyo po yun dun sa ating actual na binigay sa tao, mas malaki pa rin po yung binigay natin kesa po dun sa kinuha natin as tax revenue enough then for May to January to December rather kung sakali man ang alin magtitiis po. muna sila May to December kasi meron naman silang you're saying additional income yeah, um, yun po yung purpose natin is to give them additional income talaga and ito naman pong sinasabi nga natin nung kinumpute po natin 0.4 lang po ang inano ng train so even if we did not pass train, yung global 0.4 lang eh, 0.4 lang yung impact niya to inflation, di ba? 0.4. So, kahit hindi mo ginawa yun, tapos hindi ka nagbigay ng additional money, mahihirap, tumataas pa rin yung presyo ng langis. Kasi hindi na natin ito nakokontrol. Thank you, Asik. So, Ma'am, yung 12 billion mo is parang yan yung pera na nadagdag yes, sa mga workers? Yes, yes. Actually, it's... Um, Yes, 33 billion yung binalik natin sa general public. So, no, but just focusing on income. Yes. So you have 12 yeah. billion plus 15, ano tong 15 billion in wages? Per month in new wages. Kumbaga gumawa tayo ng bagong trabaho. 
Ah, okay. Opo, because okay. of the... Ano nga yung 2.5 unconditional? So? Yes. Ah. Okay, maraming salamat, Assistant Secretary Paolo Alvarez. Assistant Secretary Hapitan, maraming salamat po. Presidential Spokesperson, Harry Roque. Tuloy pa tayo. Yes, sir. Welcome back na lang. Sure. Thank you po. So, tuloy po natin ang ating press briefing and this being a Monday, syempre, pagkatapos ng uh, usaping inflation, dito naman tayo sa mga mabuting balita itong lunes na ito. Um, Unang-una po, mabuting balita po para sa mga taga Sibut, mga sa buong Visayas. Ang ating bagong Mactan, Cebu International Airport po, ay matatapos na at magkakaroon po ng inauguration sa ikapito ng Hunyo. Ito po ay uh, inaasahan na magtaas ng uh, annual passenger capacity from its uh, current 4.5 million to 13 million, both for domestic and international flights. Isa pa pong mabuting balita, meron po tayong first-of-a-kind gene bank facility, the first in Luzon, to be launched in Cagayan Valley region. In Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, through its Institutional Development Grant, funded the Plant Genetic Resources Center in support to future crop research and development, which will be beneficial for researchers as well as to our farmers. No? The Plant Genetic Resource Center is expected to store collections of major and high-value crops, including rice and native corn varieties. Oh, ba mabuting balita po, bagamat tumataas ang presyo ng uh, langis, the Asian Development Bank in its recent assessment expressed that the Philippines will be able to reduce poverty incidence to 14% by 2022. The ADB lauded the Duterte administration's aggressive spending on infrastructure through the Build, Build, Build program, citing that this can help reduce inequality by bringing in more opportunities, improving connectivity, and boosting our small and medium enterprises. The ADB also noted that the government's conditional cash transfer program has made a substantial contribution in addressing inequality and poverty across the country. We're confident that the Philippines, that the government will help transform the Philippines into a high middle income economy by 2022 through further modernizing the country's infrastructure and making available social protection programs to the poor. We hope that this will help Filipinos lead more comfortable lives. Now, bukod pa po dun sa mga hakbang na binanggit natin kanina, as we speak, nagpe-press conference po ngayon si uh, um, Secretary Bellio ng uh, Department of Labor tungkol nga po doon sa kanyang mandato na mga wage boards ay dapat ng pag-aralan kung kinakailangan na nga mag-increase ng minimum wage. As I said, nagpe-press con din po sila ngayon sa office ng DOLE. No? So, <laughs> ha? Ano opinion? Eh, ngayon pa lang po binigay yung order. Kalaan mo kasi yan, normally, there should be a petition. Pero ang ginawa na ng uh, presidente, inutusan na sila, wag na kayo magantay ng petition. No? Pag-aralan na on your own no? kung uh, kinakailangan na ngang itaas ang uh, minimum wage. At, and I just got a text from Yusek uh, Wimpy Fontebella, ang dami nga lang niyang tinex, napakaano naman ito kung babasahin. Pero ang kanyang sinasabi ay, among others, ang DOE daw, mga hakbang na ginagawa nila ngayon para maibsan itong pagtaas ng presyo ng uh, langis. Eh, um, Unang-una po ay yung ini-insure nila na dapat yung taas ng uh, presyo ng uh, bilihin sa mga local gas stations ay alinsunod sa taas ng uh, uh, presyo in the world market and that there will be no um, great disparity between the increase in world prices and in the increase in local pump prices. Tapos sabi niya, para ma-insure ang ating supply security, meron po tayong mga kasunduan with Thailand para po magkaroon ng joint study, investigation, and assessment of possibilities of cooperation on supply. Meron din daw tayong agreement with the U.S. Department of Energy assistance in assessing the options and potentials for Philippine strategic um, oil stockpiles. Meron din tayong agreement with Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry assistance in response for energy security initiatives in the ASEAN region to conduct a feasibility study on development of a master plan and comprehensive scheme for oil stockpiling. Okay? So, ang sabi rin niya rito is the worst case scenario um, the DOE can always exercise its 
powers to regulate the distribution of oil products in the country. No? So, okay. Pero mahaba po yung kanyang text. Ang sabi ko, mag na lang siya sa Thursday. <laughs> Kasi hindi tayo sigurado kung saan ang uh, press briefing tomorrow. No? Tentatively, it's supposed to be Bontok, but apparently Bontok is so difficult to reach. So it might not happen in Bontok. We might, happen, we might have a press briefing here tomorrow, in which case I'll invite Undersecretary Wimpy Fuentebella tomorrow if we will have the press briefing here tomorrow. No? Okay. Questions now? Questions. Maricel Halili, TV5. Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, may we have your uh, reaction uh, with regards to the statement of Senator Kiko Pangilinan calling for Solicitor General Jose Calida to resign from post? Uh, meron daw po kasi siyang 150 million peso deal with the government referring to his uh, uh, family's uh, security agency. So parang wala naman daw, ano daw yung difference nito doon sa situation ni Secretary Teo? I think the call... Your question should be addressed to Secretary to Soljen Kalida because he was asked to resign by uh, Secretary Francis. No? But um, my reading of uh, the Constitution and the anti graft law supports the conclusion made by the Soljen that there is no conflict of interest. No? He um, resigned all his corporate posts before he became Soljen, and I don't think mere ownership of stock certificates is prohibited by the Constitution. I have the constitutional provision here, and the prohibition is cabinet members shall not during their tenure directly or indirectly practice any other profession, participate in any business, or be financially interested in any contract or with any franchise or special privilege granted by the government or any subdivision agency or instrumentality thereof, including GOCCs or their subsidiaries. Stock ownership, obviously, is not covered. No. So it has to be, you have to be part of management to be guilty of violating Section 13. And this is also mirrored in RA 6713. No? It's not, um, the, the prohibition is to directly or indirectly have any financial or material interest in any transaction requiring the approval of their office. Kaya nga po ang sabi ko dun sa isang interview ko, I think with Channel 7, kung ang security agency contract is a OGCC, talagang lagot siya. Kasi siyang approving authority, as in Juan Dateo, um, it was also in the OT. Pero if it's not in his office, then uh, I don't see the conflict of interest. But I could be wrong. I'm sure this matter will be pronounced upon by our courts. Meaning, sir, uh, hindi ito enough grounds for Yes, I think mere stock ownership is not prohibited for as long as you declare it in your sal -in. And right now, the situation for Sojan Kalida is he acknowledged that he has stock ownership but he's not exercising any management um, powers in the company, um, the shares of which are still owned by his family. Okay. And he has not entered into any contract with his own office, the office of the Solicitor General. So I think there's a world of a difference between the one that they transaction and Solicitor Kalida. Kayo naman, alam nyo naman kung bakit lumalabas yung mga pula na yan ki, Kali, ki Soljen Kalida. Nanalo kasi siya dun sa kawaran to petition niya. Binabawian siya ng mga kalaban niya, no? yung so, mga nasaktan doon sa ruling ng Kowaranto. Obvious naman yan. So basahin, basahin ko lang yung question ni Pia, baka may dagdag ka pa rin about the uh, uh, Soljan Kalida. Documents so, show the security firm owned by Soljan Kalida's family bag 10 government contracts. Uh, two with the DOJ, Kalida will uh, still own 60% of shares as of September 2016. That's malaka See any conflict of interest here? How will uh, it deal with the issue given PRD's strict guidance on integrity of cabinet officials? Again, I read to you the provision of 6713. It has to be interest in any contract requiring the approval of their office. Basta hindi siya mangontrata sa office of the Solicitor General. Even if he enters into contract with DOJ, the DOJ is not under him. In fact, it's... um. It's independent of the OSG, and they only go to Congress for purposes of budget presentation. No? Sabay lang sila nagpipresenta ng budget nila, but they're autonomous from each other. Okay, other issue? Hi, sir. Good morning. Yes, Rose. Sir, ano na po yung update nung, uh, bago po nagbitiw si Secretary Juan Dateo, nagsumiti po siya na, di umano yung nagsimuti siya ng proposal to outsource visa processing for Chinese tourists sa DFA. At ang ipinapanukala raw pong kumpanya ni Wanda Teo ay isang pribadong kumpanya na maliit at dati nang nasangkot sa credit card scam. Ano po yung update dito ni 
Secretary Cayetano. Nako, you better ask Secretary Cayetano po because I have no idea. As you know, um, both passporting and special visa sometimes no fall within the uh, consular affairs functions of uh, the DFA. So tingin niyo sir legal ba yung nagpapa-outsource tayo sa 'di ba parang may security issue to visa to eh. May tingin niyo meron pong irregularidad sa ganitong panukala. I I cannot come up with a legal opinion as spokesperson pero there was an observation made by a prior security I mean secretary of foreign affairs that even the printing of the passport was illegally subcontracted although that's one legal opinion others have different opinions. Thank you sir. Okay, uh, Ina Andolong. Sir, you mentioned that in the next or upcoming cabinet meeting, um, different agencies will be submitting measures or contingency plans po ba yun for... Hindi man, alleviation measures. May isa pa palang dinagdag si, Wis, si Un Undersecretary Wimpy. Yung vouchers daw for um, jeepney drivers under the train law, they will make sure that these vouchers are given to uh, jeepney operators. Okay. Nasa law yun eh. Uh, he cited it. Coming from the perspective of a driver. Well, kaya siguro duhin natin na makuha nila yun. No? Sir, uh -huh. dun sa alleviating measures, what uh, was that upon the President's instructions? Because I remember more than two weeks ago, economic managers briefed the President about this issue of inflation. Does this mean that the President has a special concern now over the rising prices of goods? Well, I think ang special concern is the rising price of crude oil. And because for the longest time they appear to be increasing and increasing, it's a world, worldwide problem. Unfortunately, kaya nga napayak na si presidente nung sa alegria, kasi talagang wala tayong sapat na langis to support our needs. No, we have to import 90% of our petroleum requirements. No, kaya kahit alung gawin natin dito, we're ever dependent on imported oil. No, pero which does not mean that we take it sitting down. Pero I think the fact na yung pace ng increase e ganito ng kabilis is a reason for us to look for alleviation measures. And But that, nothing deviates from the economic assumption of the managers. No? And that will be the main agenda of the next cabinet Hindi naman. Meeting. Siguro I think it will be one of the agenda. Alam mo naman ang agenda namin, marami, no? because we, we meet at least seven hours once a month no? and we discuss many things. Mm -hmm. And so earlier you said that you're ready <laughs> to follow or comply if in case... Uh, congressmen or lawmakers pass a law suspending the train law but um, since the train law is the f is the source of funds for key projects like the BBB won't you oppose it won't you ask your allies in congress to oppose such measure well so far naman si president has not really we exercise his veto powers i can only remember an instance when he did and that was when the train law called for lower sin taxes so he vetoed that provision in favor of the sin taxes law to make sure that sin taxes will not be reduced. So he's very circumspect in his power to veto. Questions? Uh, Pia Gutierrez. Sir, I know that the DFA will give a briefing on this, but can you give us an overview of what President Duterte plans to do in South Korea? Yeah. It's normally Assistant Secretary... Um, who? But normally, it's the same, di ba? Si Tess ang nag, uh, De La Vega ang, uh, De Vega ang nagbibrief sa press corps, no? All I know is that there will be a summit with the South Korean leader on the 4th, no? So that's the main um, agenda, no? The summit with the South Korean president. Do you know what summit, sir? And what well, is that about? Well, you know, because normally it's the DFA that uh, will not give us, in fact, the complete itinerary until we get there. But um, usually, si Tess de Vega will give the members of the media a briefing. I think this will be this afternoon. Well, in, the, uh, in my schedule, there's a scheduled briefing on the president's visit this afternoon. I don't know if you've been informed. Yeah. But traditionally, she comes here and briefs you. Uh, Does it include a meeting with uh, South Korean President Moon? Not sure about the details now. No, it will. I will really have to defer to um, the DFA because, as I said, even we don't get a copy of the actual itinerary unless it's on the day itself. Okay, uh, Joseph, we have a question. Sir, in sa train lang, no. Okay, um, hindi mo pwedeng isuspend yung whole train, correct? 
Kasi maka-apekto sa revenue collection natin yan. What we can do is that meron namang staff executory na yes. provision yung yes. $80. Yes. So that's the most. Para yes. medyo ma-arrest yung Unless increases. Unless Congress repeals the law altogether. Uh, they have, kung ba paano, kung halimbawa ganun yung direction nila. As I said, you know, the president as a lawyer respects the separation of powers. Um, already it is the month of May, so it's been implemented since January. So we have reported that we've had record um, tax collection primarily because of train. Um, so if it will be suspended, well, I hope it is um, Congress uh, does not do so because uh, meron na talagang projected um, expenditure for the expected rise in uh, tax intakes. No? Hmm. But um, ang, ang hinihingi lang natin pag intindi sa taong bayan, masakit po talaga ito. Pero kung ititigil naman natin ito at matitigil ang build-build-build, yung mga trabahong inasahan, yung mga additional nakita sa mga negosyo na maja-generate ng build-build-build, maantala rin. So pare-pareho tayong malulugi. No? So hanggat maaari, sana ilimit natin ang ating gagawin kung ano na yung naka, nakasulat sa batas mismo. Sir, your opinion, yung position, ang mga, yung ibang grupo would like a 750 across the board increase sa uh, minimum, ay across, uh, all over the country daw. This, I said that's legally impossible because uh, we cannot impose a national minimum wage now because the regional wage boards were created by law. Congress has to repeal that law and authorize a national wage hike anew. Okay, so kinakailangan po ng batas galing sa Kongreso. Last four, Dreyo, uh, Rose, and Bernadette. Hi, sir. Sir, can you tell us about the thinking of the president dun sa pag-order ng study ng wage hike? Kasi, sir, di ba, if we increase the wages, this will further quicken inflation kasi ipapasa ng mga company yung wage hike sa mga tao. So, tataas pa lalo yung presyo pagka nag tagtaas tayo ng wages. So, Tama po yan at meron ding posibilidad na habang tinataas ang uh, sweldo, maraming mawawalan din ng trabaho. Kaya nga po kinakailangan pag-aralan mabuti. Kaya po ang uh, ang sinyales ay binigay na para magsimula na ng proseso na pag-aaral kung talagang dapat itaas ang ang minimum wage. Okay, Pero um, ang ginawa lang po ng presidente, sinimulan na yung proseso kasi nga po without this directive eh, kinakailangan mag-file pa ng petisyon para magsimula. Rosa Licos? Sir, pinapatanong lang po sa office ibang issue. Nabanggit po kasi ni Secretary Pinyol na ipopropose niya po sa Pangulo na i-convert yung 70 billion na budget para sa CCT or 4P. So, ano po yung stand ng Malacanang? Regardless? Well, ang stand po natin ngayon, uh, kinakailangan ng taong bayan ng 4P, lalo na po ngayong mga panahon na nagtataasan ang presyo ng bilihin. So, sa tingin ko po, knowing the President, mas bibigyan niya ng prioridad ngayon ang four piece more than ever. So untimely yung proposal. Ang tingin ko lang po sa pagkakakilala ko sa kay presidente at pinag-aaralan ko naman talaga si presidente nang hindi ako mag magkaroon ng pagkakamali bilang spokesperson, hindi po ata niya masusuportahan yan. At uh, tingin ko, the president's actions will be the opposite. Titingnan niya po kung po pwede pang palawakin ang four piece sa mga panahong ito. Okay, last three, jo Bernadette, Pia, and then Joanna. Uh, Secretary, according to Dole Yusek Maglunso, they have already submitted the list of more than 3,000 companies which are engaged or suspected of labor-only contracting to Malacanang last Thursday. I would just like to know what will the President do with the list po? Okay, alam na po ng Dole ang gagawin nila because the law already provides what they will do. No, They will provide fines and they may even uh, order closure and criminal prosecution. No, So, although the uh, President asked for the list, the asking for the list does not mean it's the president who will act. I think the labor law, the labor code is very clear that it is within the power of the uh, secretary to close these establishments, provide fines, and even prosecution under the penal clause of the labor code. Last question, Joanna. Joanna. Okay. Sorry. Uh, sir, uh, other issue then po. Uh, about uh, nung Saturday po nagkaroon ng uh, anti-drug operations uh, sa North Cotabato and siyam po na uh, MILF uh, forces yung napatay po. No? And sabi po ng MILF, they will file a, uh, a strong protest uh, sa government po no? sa Coordinating Committee on the Cessation of Hostilities uh, about this. Uh, what's your reaction on this po? Kasi uh, anti-drug operations po siya 
and uh, the the government forces are claiming na may uh, may mga nakuhang uh, drugs ganyan and they were disarmed daw po so uh, what's your view about it well nagsampa naman po sila ng formal na protesta no so magkakaroon po yan ng mekanismo masisimulan po yung mekanismo magkakaroon po ng investigasyon antay muna po natin kung anong resulta ng investigasyon kung totoo na ilan sa mga miyembro ng MILF ay nadawit sa pangangalakan ng droga So malalaman po natin ang katotohanan dahil dun sa kasunduan po natin sa MALF, eh, magkakaroon po yan ng investigasyon. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Okay, Roque. so I'll let you know as soon as possible if I can make it to Bontok tomorrow, if I can make it to Bontok because everything is weather permitting, layo pala ng Bontok. I'm supposed to speak in the graduation of Bonge, Bontok State University and I promised that a long time ago. Pero it's very difficult apparently to get to Bontok, no? so we will see. If not, we'll have our regular briefing here. But if I push through, we will have the briefing uh, through other means in okay. from Bontok. Okay? okay, see you tomorrow either way. Okay, thank you, Presidential right. Spokesperson Ari Roque. Thank you, Malakanyang Press Corps. Back to our main studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.